Hi everyone, my name is Roger Wood. I'm a member of the Sons of Thunder, a gospel group that was put together in 1965. I want to tell you a story, and that story is entitled Rockin' Heaven and Hell. I'm a white guy who grew up in the early culture of Pentecost in the 60s and the 70s. My father was a pastor and an evangelist for more than 40 years before his passing. Our church became 90% African American by 1967, and we had revivals running through the church six nights a week, back to back with traveling evangelists from all around the U.S. I started at a very early age of 10 playing the Hammond B3 organ in church with my brothers and went on to travel with A.A. A. Allen revivals for many years, all three of us at the time. We grew up during a time when black gospel was mostly southern black quartets and artists like James Cleveland, Shirley Caesar, Clara Ward, uh, Edwin Hawkins, and Under Crouch was just coming on the scene during the Jesus movement in Southern California at the time. Basically, it was at the beginning of contemporary gospel. But before I get ahead of myself, let me start from the beginning. Rockin' Heaven and Hell is a true story of a young prodigy gospel group of preacher's kids who grew up playing music in Pentecostal tent revivals throughout America and chose to leave it all behind when they were offered the opportunity to go on tour with the Rolling Stones and Stevie Wonder on their notorious 1972 STP tour playing for Dorothy Norwood. The Sons of Thunder was formed by Greg Wood, Felix Williams, and Roger Wood in Seattle, Washington in 1965 and technically lasted until 1975. The group still includes today Greg Wood, Felix Williams, Roger Wood, and David Bowman. We received our name from a traveling evangelist in 1966 during a revival meeting. The band formed in a touched by an angel moment. Um, Roger took organ lessons from a teacher with severe cerebral palsy. Felix had to walk the church aisles with an offering bucket to get money to buy our first drum set. And Greg was given a trumpet from a tough female sergeant coronet player in the Salvation Army Band. Through those eclectic and diverse 10 years from 65 to 75, the momentum of the Sons of Thunder grew at a rapid pace and began to evolve from a church minister group into a pop gospel performing group. At an early age, we were thrust into a born destiny and we gladly accepted. We traveled and sang in tent revivals throughout the nation and developed quickly as a band. In 1969, our father took us out of school and moved us to Chicago to start another church on the crime-ridden south side of Chicago. At ages 13, 15, and 16, we lived in an abandoned movie theater called the State Theater at 110th and Michigan Avenue, south of the city of Chicago. We had two German Shepherd watchdogs and held revival services in the theater six nights a week. We named the church Miracle Life Center because the owner signed over the title and outright gave the property to our father for one dollar on his deathbed. The owner said he thought dad was doing a good thing by turning the theater into a church. Our services were frequented by gang members, prostitutes, single mothers, the homeless, and many saints attending church as well, all together. Chicago truly changed our lives. We spent the hot summer nights on the roof of the theater and practiced for hours and hours on end. We also played the local community colleges and did a date for Jesse Jackson's Operation Push. Uh, we were passionately in love with the music and we were taking in the concerts that were coming through the Chicagoland area like the Ohio Players, Chicago, the Doobie Brothers, Earth, Wind and Fire, Bill Withers, the Staples, the Isley Brothers, and it was all showing up in our original music. In 
You know, as young teens, we were in a whirlwind of music growth and cultural exposure during a time when some of the greatest music was ever written in the 1970s. story goes, Mick Jagger went into a Los Angeles record store in the early spring of 72 and asked to see the records of three of the best black gospel artists out at the time. Out of the three, he picked Dorothy Norwood, an established black gospel recording artist out of Atlanta, Georgia on Savoy Records, and asked her to join the tour. Well, Dorothy in turn called us, the Sons of Thunder, as we had become a very good R&B, funk, rock, gospel band. We were now 17, 19, and 20. So we lied to our father, Reverend H.L. Wood, and said we were going to do a series of church concerts in the South with Dorothy. We went on for a 20-minute set before Stevie Wonder doing straight-up high-energy black gospel, the audience flicked pills and marijuana as a way of bestowing on us their appreciation for our music. These were stone kids of the 70s, our age, but we couldn't relate to them because we had been severely sheltered by the church. On the journey, groupies, record executives, tour suppliers all offered us drugs and alcohol to get us to join the revolution, if you will. Our talent had opened a path into the exciting and dangerous world of rock and roll, where excess was the rule of the day. We basically stashed our Christian upbringing in a cab for safekeeping at Chicago O'Hare and four hours later exited a limousine inside the county convention center in Fort Worth, Texas to hang with the Rolling Stones, Annie Leibovitz, uh, Andy Warhol, uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor, Liza Minnelli, Bianca Jagger, Dick Cavett, Tina Turner, Stevie Wonder, and Truman Capote, and many others. Even after 40 years, the culture shock still tilts our head like the RCA dog. After the Fort Worth, Texas show, Dorothy's Cadillac limousines were full of people, so she gave us enough money for a Greyhound bus ticket to get to, to the next gig in Houston. Having shared the stage with the Rolling Stones a few hours earlier, our bus arrived in humid Waco, Texas, for a layover at 4 a.m. Tired, hungry, and sitting in a dilapidated bus station with a pimp, two prostitutes, and a bum sleeping on the floor. We wondered what had happened to the dream. Interestingly enough, after the Houston, Texas show, Mick Jagger asked if we wanted to fly in the Stones' private jet to the next gig in Mobile, Alabama. Feeling overwhelming conviction and fear, we awkwardly declined. When our father found out that we were on a rock and roll tour with the notorious Rolling Stones, he demanded that we return home to Chicago immediately, sparking off a firestorm of rebellion that would force us onto very, very different paths. Now, during the summer of 1973, a young Sam Kennison, former comedian and pastor's kid himself, joined us on guitar. Sam used to affectionately call us all Beagle Buddies as we jumped and scratched at the sides of the church box like puppies trying to get out onto the larger music landscape. A special endearing moment with Sam was when he got us kicked out of a Denny's restaurant after a revival in Dayton, Ohio for doing his fried egg impression on the floor. In 1974, we were asked by Word Records to come to L.A. for a showcase. We drug our feet on that opportunity, and one year later in 1975, our father, Reverend H.L. Wood, disbanded our group, took our instruments and the keys to our van after not being able to cope with the rebellious teenage years of four extremely talented young men who fully intended 
on breaking out from under the control of the church and taking their dream to the world. Then in March of 2002, we reached out to American author and journalist Robert Greenfield, the author of the STP, A Journey Through America with the Rolling Stones. A conversation with Mr. Greenfield after that, we, we knew we had to find closure, uh, but this time it was going to be on our terms. Now, 40 years later, we are coming together to reclaim our destiny, our wonderful history, and to fight cancer with our brother Greg and share our story with the world. But to accomplish this, we have created what we call a life project. This life project has three objectives. One, a music reunion DVD project. It'll include old music, new music, videos and pictures going back to 1965 and documenting the entire journey on the DVD. And then secondly, a television series script uh, will explore the deep conflict that many talented artists struggle with after leaving their church roots and dive into the rock and roll lifestyle and the psychological toll the separation from their core values has on them while their institutions of faith you know, seemingly abandon them for pursuing their dreams. It is well known that many of the greatest singers and musicians in rock and roll, R&B and pop grew up performing gospel music in church. When these artists crossed over into secular music scene, many of them were accused of leaving God to play for the devil. Sons of Thunder is a dramatic series based on the real life story of the Sons of Thunder and will deal with the many issues and drama that surfaces when artists cross over. And then the third is battling cancer. Our brother Greg, who is actually our, one of our vocalists and drummer, is battling stage four colon cancer. In 1980, Greg decided to go into the ministry as an assistant pastor. In the mid-90s, he declined an offer to join the world-renowned gospel quartet, The Imperials, who recorded and traveled with Elvis Presley. Eventually, in 1998, he became a senior pastor of his own church. Over the last three years, Greg has been taking care of his wife, who has been battling breast cancer. He had to stop pastoring altogether and take an extended leave of absence from his day job. I have stared down the devil Going toe to toe with God I wrestle with my demons And I walk around When we started in March of 2013 to write our story as a TV script, we had no idea that Greg uh, would soon be diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. This was completely unexpected, but now it was clear why we had been driven to write our story. Greg has been undergoing aggressive chemotherapy until recently when the doctor said that the cancer had spread to his stomach and is inoperable. His personal income has dried up while all of the medical expenses have built up. And now we are in the process of searching out alternative treatments. Greg has spent the last 30 years of his life serving in the ministry, attending to the needs of other people. Now, ironically, he is the one in need of support. The beautiful thing here is that by supporting this life project, you support Greg's health and the Sons of Thunder in completing our purpose and our life story because we need Greg to complete this journey that has been on hold since 1975. You see, this life project will immerse him into his first love of music and become a vital part of his healing process. Back in the day, we were always 
away from home and had to watch each other's back while on the road together. And this is no different. We still consider ourselves, quote, on the road, and we will meet this challenge head on as a band of brothers and all bask in the victory on the backside. Sons of Thunder. That's us. Can you believe it? Hey, it's been a long time. 1965 to 2014, Felix. Mm -hmm. Been through hell and high water. Uh, tell me about Suffered it. Suffered a bunch of pain. <laughs> You never even thought our time was over. Oh, uh, but here, here we, we are. are. Got that. So we wrote this little song for our family and friends. Let's check this out. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. As long as you're around, life will never bring us down. Gonna be around. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Forever in the day, no matter what they say, gonna be around. Hey, hey. It's been hard. Life's been a little tough now, now, now. We have decided to do an online crowdfunding campaign at www.indiegogo.com. You can go to www.originalsonsofthunder.com or to www.facebook.com backslash S O T is back and learn more about where the campaign is at and more about the very unique story and how you can reach this goal with us and share it with the world. You know, the demographic of interest in this project is wide and diverse and encompasses many generations. It hits a nerve with many people and has traditionally been a sensitive topic of conversation because of the taboo conflict it raises. But everyone experiences conflict at some point in their lives, especially in the world of entertainment. This Life Project gives us a chance to invest into the lives of young people coming up through these similar experiences by sharing our experiences in the TV series. By sharing our life's challenges and experiences as navigational tools, we hope to give insights and direction for others' own life career choices. Any support that you can offer for our life project is extremely heartfelt and greatly appreciated. This is a huge undertaking, but together we can accomplish the goal. We want to thank you, the listener, for taking out the time to listen to our story. It was your love that pulled me through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time, your prayers, and support. Godspeed, the Sons of Thunder. Hey, 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 hey. I was young, I was old, but I'll never old.